warning and the police has been um, chasing protesters, um, creating questions, attacking and, and pulling back uh, in the government quarter. That is basically three, um, um, three blocks uh, in, in central Kiev. Mm -hmm. And of course, if the um, the tires are put on fire and create heavy smell. The police are not able to see anything because they stop for a moment. But um, otherwise, they um, they attack from different standpoints, and there is a ceasefire announced at the moment. Victoria, do we have a sense um, when you're when you're among the protesters? You mentioned many of them are men. Um, do you have a sense that they all want the same thing? Do they seem united? Do they seem to have a, an end plan themselves or demands uh, that they want met? Well, they are very, uh, very much united. Something they have demonstrated with, uh, for the last three months of the process. They have their own system of um, self-organization. It is all grassroots. They had their own kitchen, volunteer medical service, um, all other services that you can think of to leave uh, for three months in the center of the city. In the hands they, they were there. But it is also noted that according to the poll, those people protesting there, they are not there for the opposition. Um, they are there protesting against police brutality. Um, um, against the corruption in the country and their demand a uh, reload of power in the whole country. Hmm. Uh, we heard Nick mention um, one of the oligarchs putting something out on his website. Have we heard a, a lot coming from uh, the power base, not just the government, but some of the more powerful figures in Ukrainian society? Have people been speaking out or have they remained largely silent? Uh, well, I, I think your question is actually um, the answer it is to what happened in the parliament today because the powerful people are there are represented in the parliament either directly or indirectly with people associated with their businesses or their political forces. And uh, what happened today is the speaker uh, would not even um, agree to register um, any kind of legal um, drops that would limit the power of the president. And the, the MPs from the ruling party and the Communist Party, they just plead um, the parliament as soon as they heard of the clashes and people attacking the parliament. Um, so basically, the, um, the parliament um, said that they will be not uh, participating in um, resolving this political crisis, which is an indirect answer of um, those people who are the powerful stakeholders in the country. Mm. And what has daily life been like in, in the Ukraine? We know that this has taken a toll on an economy that's already been struggling. Uh, there are concerns about prices. There's concerns about capital flow, uh, runs on banks. How has daily life been for the average citizen in Kiev? Well, the production has down 5%. The, um, the exchange rate for a dollar. Um, uh, the group of the local currency has dropped 10 percent as of now. Um, uh, usual people, what they experience is inflation, the rise of prices, even on everyday products, which is quite small now. But uh, but more important, the pensioners and those socially um, unprotected people, they've experienced um, uh, delays in um, in their social payment. They've received the pensions um, and the money for child care. Um, so this was the major um the major feeling they've had. And of course, the businesses have slowed down uh, and the people that did so much purchases have dropped. Hmm. Victoria, before you mentioned that people, some of the protesters were trying to seek safety in a cathedral. It's something that they have done before. Can you explain that to us? And where is it located? How many are able to to fit into it? I mean, I'm assuming not that many. And, and, and is that an area the police just will not go into? Well, they, uh, this is an, an escape location they, they, they've had uh, before, even back in, in November. Um, the cathedral is uh, is quite a big area. It's hard. It's not just itself, but also the area um, around it. And the police has never entered it um, as of um, as of now, as, as not before. Um, it is located about two blocks from the epicenter of the um, of the clashes at the moment. Um, and um, the church said that. Their doors are always open for all the people. They do have clear rules, no political um, agitation, no, um, no weapons uh, um, uh, in in the cathedral at the premises itself. Uh, and uh, uh, the, I know it looks like Middle Ages. Um, it sounds like Middle Ages, uh, where people have been trying to get escaped um, uh, in, in churches. But this is what happens now in Kiev.
All right, Victoria Butenko uh, on the ground for us in Kiev. Uh, please stand by for us, Victoria, and thank you so much uh, for your detailed description of what's happening. Our correspondent, Phil Black, is working his way to the square in Kiev earlier this evening. He described the scene to Aisha Sase. But it has degenerated into something far more violent, and as a result of that, uh, Ukrainian authorities have made some very uh, strong uh, statements, clearly holding the opposition protesters and indeed their leadership responsible for the violence that has taken place here today. Uh, and we now believe that there is some sort of police operation taking place on Independence Square. Uh, it is possible, given the language uh, that we have heard uh, from these statements from the Ukrainian authorities, from the video we are seeing from Independence Square, that the Ukrainian authorities are using today's deadly violence uh, as an excuse to do something they've been pretty keen to do for going on three months now, and that is clear that square and assert the government's authority in this city, Ash. And Phil, as we look at these live pictures on our screens, I want you to help us make sense of it. I don't know your exact vantage point, but we see fires burning, uh, and we see some smoke billowing, and we see fireworks or certainly sparks flying. Can you give us some sense of how this operation, how this confrontation is being fought? I, I can't at that detail yet, I swear, I'm afraid we're not close enough because of police roadblocks around the city as we've been making our way in here tonight. We were only able to get so far via vehicle. As I say, we are now on foot. We believe that we are getting close and I hope to be able to tell you that very soon. Okay. But it certainly does look dramatic. It would certainly imply that there is some sort of operation there taking place. And indeed, the people have been occupying that square for all of this time are putting on some sort of resistance. The U.S. government says it is appalled by the violence in Ukraine. Let's get more on this from Elise Labatt in Washington right now. Elise, uh, what has the U.S. been saying? Um, Maggie, well, not just appalled by the violence, but also urging all American citizens to stay inside, don't go out in the streets, not only because they're afraid that they might get caught up in some of the violence going on right now, but as Phil had said, you know, there's a real concern that the government is going to take what the State Department is calling extraordinary measures to crack down on protesters and clear out that square, and certainly they don't want any uh, U.S. Uh, citizens to get caught up in that and possibly get hurt or arrested. Mm. Uh, this puts diplomats in a difficult position, doesn't it, Elise, because they have been calling for dialogue, urging dialogue, and yet that seems that it's something um, that is not, just not possible in Ukraine right now. Um, where does this leave them? W you know, what can they do? What action can they take? Well, they're not just calling on the government to, you know, stop its crackdown on the protesters. They're also reaching out to the opposition where they do have fairly good contacts to uh, stop the violence. They obviously don't, they want to maintain that the uh, protesters have a right to peaceful protest, but now that this is getting violent, is getting out of hand, they're calling on all sides to de-escalate. And, you know, the U.S. had been pretty effective in the last couple of weeks in terms of working with the government and the opposition um, on mediating some kind of end to this long standoff um, involving the president. Um, and, you know, the president had uh, sacked his government and the prime minister sacked his government, appointed a new coalition. And so there were, you know, some gains that were being made, obviously not enough to stop um, this simmering violence. But I think what they're hoping is that if they can get this violence to calm down, get everybody to deescalate, then they can get back to the table. Uh, this is a difficult situation. Um, what, what is the U.S.'s sort of... Um, ultimate end game here. What would they like to see in terms of Ukraine? We reminded our viewers earlier this started um, with a decision uh, for, for the U Ukraine moving away from the EU more towards Russia. Um, is, is there concern on the part of the U.S. that the Ukraine um, is developing closer ties with Russia? Well, certainly that's what they want to try to avoid. The U.S. really wants Russia, uh, the Ukrainians to move more towards the West instead of going back to being under Russia's iron fist, if you will. And that's why there's been a lot of attention uh, to Ukraine, not just in terms of making sure that the protesters' voices is out there, but really trying to send the message that the U.S. feels that Ukraine's future is with Europe, is with the West, is with opening up. And that's why... You know, Secretary Kerry of State, John Kerry, I was traveling with him a few months ago um, in the region. He was supposed to make a stop in Ukraine. And after Ukraine failed to sign that partnership agreement with the EU, he scrapped that trip and went instead to Moldova, 
which was moving more towards Europe, which signed that agreement, which was moving away towards Russia. And the implicit argument there is that the U.S. will support you if you move closer towards Europe. You know, the U.S. says it's not in a bidding war with Russia for the future of these former republics, but certainly um, its actions and its, its message to the Ukrainian people are your future is with the West and was with Europe. Hmm. And, and, and in terms of that, um, what else is on the table? Is there the ability to have aid, to have some sort of agreements? Are we looking more at a situation where they would be talking about sanctions instead? Well, they would talk about sanctions if the government fails to implement a democratic process, if you see the government continuing to crack down on protesters when the vi government was involved in a lot of violence. You know, they have sanctions ready to go. If, this, if the government does move to clear out the square, does move to crack down on protesters, there are sanctions kind of ready to be slapped on Ukraine if this uh, escalates any further. I think what the U.S. would like to see is use its, its economic leverage in a different way to say, if you calm down, if you move towards democratic processes, if you have a free and fair election, then we can help you with a lot of U.S. aid. Because over the last, Ukraine used to be one, one of the, I think, the third top recipient of U.S. aid over the past few years with the um, anti-democratic moves of the government. That aid has certainly dwindled a bit. But I think that this whole message of move towards Europe and the West, move um, away from Russia, and um, move towards the democratic processes, that's where the U.S. can use its influence with, with uh, democratic.